Hi, I'm with Lars Falburg Andersen, the European Union Ambassador to Israel. Hi. Hi. So, uh, what is the stand of the EU towards the... Um, let's start with the events this morning in Gaza and the events of this past week in the West Bank and in Israel. I want to make it totally clear that um, we from the European Union side slow, show 100% solidarity with the uh, people in southern uh, Israel who are enduring now uh, for several days uh, an unprecedented barrage of um, rocket firing, um, indiscriminate firing of rockets against uh, civilians is totally unacceptable. It's something that the European Union condemns. Nobody should endure that uh, and uh, we want to see this um, rocketing stop. Uh, we want um, everybody uh, to de-escalate the situation and we want to return to the ceasefire that has prevailed for uh, quite some time uh, now uh, in um, uh, in relation to Gaza. But you're probably updated that there isn't ceasefire this morning. There is even an escalation from the Israeli side. No, I know. And this is what uh, is worrying us very much. And that's the reason why we again call uh, on all parties uh, to de-escalate uh, the uh, situation. But again, I want to underline that uh, shooting rockets indiscriminately at civilians cannot be a legitimate or an acceptable response for any kind of grievance that you have. Yes. And uh, let's talk about there is a proposition that is very uh, successful, let's say, to ban products from uh, the settlements. And also, uh, this morning I've heard, to ban Israeli companies that work with the settlements, even though they don't have factories there. What do you think about that? First of all, I want to clarify. Uh, the EU is not banning anyone. We are against boycotts, we are against BDS, and we are against isolation of Israel. The things that have uh, been discussed and to some extent already uh, implemented is a policy of disengagement from settlements. Settlement products can still be sold and have for many years uh, been sold on the European uh, internal market of 500 million people but they are not part of Israel as we see it, and therefore they're not benefiting from the preferential customs uh, uh, agreement uh, that we have uh, with Israel. But the products are not banned from the European market. They can come in, they just have to pay customs like any other product uh, that's coming from uh, an area with which we don't have uh, a free trade uh, agreement. And that has been in effect since uh, 2005. What has happened recently, is uh, that uh, we have taken a decision to uh, ensure that uh, no EU taxpayers' monies are spent in settlements, meaning that any of the programs that EU, uh, the Israel is participating in, any EU programs, can only take place within uh, the 67 lines, within the green line, meaning that uh, businesses or entities based in settlements cannot um, enjoy funding under these programs. This is the case, for example, with the big science and technology program, Horizon 2020, an 80 billion uh, euro uh, program. Uh, so that, that is a, a second aspect of our disengagement policy from settlements. And the final one that you mentioned, um, which is coming on stream now, is the fact that a number of member states are now publishing on their Ministry of Foreign Affairs websites a warning to their companies about the reputational and also the uh, legal risk of involving themselves in business in settlements uh, because uh, the legal status is uncertain and also because corporate social responsibility is an important uh, marketing parameter uh, with European consumers uh, and uh, therefore um, companies have to bear this in mind uh, when uh, they are considering investments uh, and, and uh, business deals. Okay. There are many voices in Israel uh, who say that there is an anti-Semitism in Europe and that there is hatred towards Israel. They mix uh, you know, Judaism with nationality of Israel. What do you have to say I want to say that? that we take 
uh, anti-Semitism in Europe very, very seriously. It's something we unreservedly uh, condemn. It's something that member states are, are working on, including through various legislative uh, measures uh, to uh, curb uh, racism, discrimination, xenophobia and anti-Semitism. So this is uh, a, a challenge uh, and I think we are, are, are trying our level best to live up uh, to that uh, challenge uh, in Europe. But as you said yourself, that should not be confused with legitimate uh, disagreement uh, with certain Israeli policies, uh, including on, on settlements. And I think it's very important uh, to uh, draw a very clear line between um, utterances that are anti-Semitic and utterances uh, that are pointing to differences, legitimate differences that you can have uh, with any country's uh, policies in certain areas. Do you think the EU will be part of any future peace agreement in the area, in the region? That's what we very much hope and that's what we really want to. That's the reason why we have put uh, this offer of an unprecedented privileged partnership on the table both to Israel and to the Palestinian uh, Authority in case you reach an, a peace agreement. It's something which uh, in the case of Israel would be the second best thing to membership of the EU. So it's not uh, a, uh, a trivial uh, offer that we are putting down here and we are doing it because we are friends of Israel's and we want to try to uh, give the Israeli public a safety net in a situation where they have to take some very difficult and very existential decisions. Um, but this is uh, what we are working towards and that's the future we see uh, in the EU-Israeli relationship. What are the EU interests in the peace um, agreement in Israel or in Israel in general? You know, maybe you should only, you should say, you know, let them be what they are and fight if they want and we will, you know, you have enough sources from well, other places. Well, we consider the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the Israeli-Arab conflict a key fault line in the region without which uh, it would be very difficult to uh, achieve uh, real progress. And since the Middle East is located on our doorstep and many of the problems emanating from the uh, Middle East have repercussions in Europe in terms of uh, refugee flows and so on and so forth, we have a keen interest in trying to achieve stability in this region. But it's also because we are friends of Israel and we are friends of the Arabs and in the case of Israel, we want to safeguard Israel's future and security and we think the best way to do that is through a peace agreement. Thank you very much.